Good morning, Governor. Good morning. How are you today? Good. How about yourself? Yeah, still above ground. <laughs> so that means that it's as good as you, you know, as long as you're above ground, you're still doing it. That means you're still breathing. Right. <laughs> Which is right good this enough. Way, this way? Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Thanks. Right. So you come here during very uh, a very pivotal time in our in our nation's uh, well, I think my book's very pivotal, and it's for and it's the right time for it to be out there. You know, Democrips and Rebloodlicans, no more gangs in government. So I'm calling for the abolishment of political parties. It's the only thing that'll save our country. Level us out and uh, go from there. Well, I got good allies too. If you read Chapter Two, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams, they're mm -hmm. pretty good in support of what I'm saying. Well, we'll see you in the studio, and I'm sure you've got a lot to talk to Howard about this morning. Sure, hopefully. All right, Governor, we'll see you soon. All right, thanks. Thank you. Jesse Ventura used to be governor. Uh, he now has a new book out called Demo Crips and Rebloodlickens. Re Rebloodlickens. Re hey, hey. What? There's the governor right now wearing his Jimi Hendrix shirt. I think you're the only governor. Hey, Ex governor, rock and roll, yeah. who is rock and roll that really proudly wears the Jimi Hendrix shirt. Oh, absolutely! In fact, Howard, on, when I had my inaugural party after I won, yeah, you know, normally it's Tuxes and Glenn Miller and all that. Yeah, well, that's not me. No, I had headlining Kid Johnny Lang, Warren Zevon, America, <laughs> and you know who wanted to come but they couldn't because they they called me personally and who? apologized. Aerosmith. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Both uh, uh, Steven, Steven Tyler and Joe Perry. They were pre-booked. They said they couldn't get out of it, but they said if we could be there. Were you the rock and roll governor in the sense that you were anti-establishment? You weren't part of uh, any sort of a party organization. I don't know. I just I, I've loved rock and roll my whole life, and so why would I listen to Glenn Miller? Yeah, right. That's not me. Well, maybe I guess at the inauguration you're supposed to be inclusive and bring in all kinds of music. But, you know, what? fuck that. Well, I was inclusive and brought in all kinds of people. We did it at the Target Center. It was $10 a ticket, and it sold out in three hours, and we had 16,000 people there. We had everything from bikers to transvestites. I'm dying to ask you, <laughs> what do you think? What do you think okay. of, of the uh, this guy in the Navy SEALs? I thought of you right away. Yeah. Uh, we know that the SEALs... An elite team went in and took out Osama bin Laden. And these guys, like yourself, they're very humble in a way. You, you don't really talk about your mission. Yep. Uh, it's secretive. And that kind of adds to the, the fear around the world of the SEALs because they don't not talk. Not anymore. <laughs> Were you upset when this guy wrote a book? No, not at all. Uh, if, uh, in fact, I would prefer to hear from him. I would rather hear from boots on the ground who are actually there than bureaucrats in Washington tell me what happened. But what about the argument? That okay. when you give away, when, if every SEAL, yourself included, wrote a book about some of your secret missions and gave away details, that it would compromise a security in the way the SEALs operate. I don't think so. You I don't? don't? I don't think there's anything that secretive anymore about it. I mean, Hollywood is, is now treating the SEALs today like they did the Green Berets back in the 60s and 70s, you right, know? Right, right. And uh, I... I I don't like all the publicity. I liked it better when I was in Howard. Nobody even knew that we existed. We just wore green uniforms with jump wings on, and everybody thought, that's strange. Navy guys wearing green fatigues. Yeah, because that kind of makes me feel good. Like, I, liked, I still believe, like, you know, I, I want a James Bond or something. I, yeah. I like the idea that there's a secret uh, part of the military that goes in like stealth and takes care of some of these issues. Like, I, I still like to think we're the good guys. I do think we're the good guys. And sometimes you go in on these missions, and these guys do it secretly. Yeah. And that scares the shit out of the rest of the world, that we have these elite teams. But they don't seem to be scared anymore. Uh, no. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I don't have a problem with it in this aspect, Howard. My tax dollars pay for everything government does. Right. So, therefore, I feel I have a right to know what government is doing with my money. Although I saw some politicians say that, that, uh, look, we really have to look into this guy in the SEALs because huh. he wrote a book and he didn't let us vet the book. But he should have at least come to us and said, look, we're, I'm, I'm printing this story. We got to make sure there's no top secret information. Yeah, and we got to make sure that you don't tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yeah. Did you read the book? <laughs> no, I have not yet. Are you curious to read the book? Uh, I probably will. I probably will. On a difficulty level, scale of 1 to 10, 10 being most difficult, yep. the raid to get Osama bin Laden, is that, it seems to me, a very intricate mission. A, locating this guy, 
coming up with a plan, landing a helicopter in the middle of the night in the compound. As we saw, that went sort of awry. But then they came up on their feet with a whole other plan, got sure. in and got the guy. Is that, a, a, to you, a guy who's done these missions, is that one of the most difficult missions you've heard of? Well, it, it certainly it probably is. And remember, the, 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 the logistics and what they're doing today is far different than when I was in. Right. When I was in, it was the jungles of Vietnam, right down in the Mekong Delta and all that stuff. So it's a whole different. Today, it's urban. Today, right. they're, today they're almost like a SWAT team. You know, they're a SWAT team that doesn't give you Miranda rights. You know, you're, yeah, right. But you're, you're, you're such a bright guy that I imagine when you were in the SEALs and you were doing stuff in Vietnam, did the absurdity then occur to you that... Why are we really fighting with no, these guys? It didn't. No, because you no, can't think that you way. You can't think that way. That is not your job. Remember, Howard, wars are called by, caused by failed politics. Right. Politicians cause wars. It's usually some guy's getting rich. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. And in fact, I would tell you today, Howard, I'd be a conscientious objector. To the Vietnam War? No, to all of it. Well, let, let, is World War II a noble war? I would say. I don't yeah. know. I wasn't alive, but I would right. like to think it was. My right. parents are both World War II veterans. Not many people can say their mom is a world was a World War II veteran. Because I was talking to my daughter. She spends time in Vietnam, actually, in Hanoi, and she was telling me how, you know, they kind of have a free enterprise system there, but there's socialism, socialized sure. medicine. It doesn't sound all that different from what we're doing in this country. And, you know, you, you sit and think about all those guys who died. I mean, let's be sober for a second. 58,000. 58,000 guys never got to live their lives. And it breaks my heart because what the fuck were we fighting about over there? I don't know. Yeah. When you read on it later, you, you know, I know more about it today than I did then. Back then, Howard, I was 18 right out of high school. Right, and you bought into it. Yeah, and uh, but uh, and if you hadn't reason, bought into it, you would have been dead. The reason I say that I'd be a conscientious objector today, and I'm an atheist, right? You know, but I'd still be one today because Howard, every war since I've been alive, I do not believe the United States is threatened. Right. I mean, even with terrorists today, do you think they're going to do a Normandy invasion in Virginia? No, but they might blow something up. Well, that's no different than a gang. Right. You know, or doing something or whatever might be, you know. There are small little pockets of troublemakers. And you don't solve that by invading countries and occupying them. So what do you do when, like what happened in Libya? They killed our ambassador. What would I do? Yeah, if you were president, you know, (laughs) which some people fantasize about. If you were president, what do you do? I'll tell you what I do. What do you do? I, 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 I would cut all foreign aid. How can this country possibly give out foreign aid when we're broke? But isn't wait, the argument... Wait, and I would shut our embassies <clears throat> down and come home. But isn't the argument, if you become an isolationist, that these countries will now fester more and more poverty? If we don't give Egypt $2 billion a year, they what will... What about they will, our people? Like Ron Paul said, what is foreign aid? Foreign aid is taking from our people and giving it to other countries' rich people. Right. Do you really believe that foreign aid filters down to the poor people? Howard, it's gone and... Sto- Classic example, Ferdinand Marcos in the Philippines. Right. We give the Philippines all this aid, and what does it go to? So he can buy a Melda 8,000 pairs of shoes. Right. The, the, the people never actually they see the money. They don't get it. They don't see the money. All it, What it is, Howard, it's taking our current political system and spreading it worldwide, which is called bribery. We have a political system today that is based completely on bribery. If you do it in the private sector, you go to jail. So Barack Obama should remove all funds from Egypt, from, from Libya, the world. from, 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 from the, the world. world. That's it. Everybody's on their own. Yes. Yes. And who made us the world's policemen? I don't know. I we don't did. know either. We did. Yeah. Well, yeah I don't you know. take on the role because you want it. Right. You know, I, I don't know why we're the world's policemen. I would shut down all of our foreign bases. I mean, we got multiple bases in Korea, multiple bases in Japan, multiple bases in Germany. Those wars were over 60 years ago. And like Vietnam, it, it's been proven that w- what is it we're afraid of? Their economic system? Who gives a shit? No, right? we fight for the international corporations. We don't fight for the country, and we've been doing it for over 100 years. There's a great book you need to read. It's called War is a Racket by General, Major General Smedley Butler. He's the most decorated Marine in history. He won two Congressional Medals of Honor. And he was last century. You know what Smedley says in the book? Well, 
What did he say? He said, I didn't fight for the American people. I fought for the United Fruit Corporation. Right. When they'd go to Central and South America, if they didn't get cooperation, they'd send the Marines in to get it. Wow. And this comes from the, the most decorated Marine in history, a man who won two Congressional Medals of Honor. So he had an epiphany, much like yourself, and after serving in the military, you kind of go, wait a second, what the hell was I really fighting about? You're not about? fighting for the American people. You're, you're fighting for international corporations. You're their muscle. So well, that's their why muscle. I wonder, right. Howard, how you can keep saying, I like to think of us as the good guys. I do. There are plenty of places where we don't bother to go, where people are being slaughtered every day by their governments, and we don't don't even bother. So what are we going to do now? How are you going li- to... Listen, I know you're not for either party, but if you had to vote in this upcoming election, Governor... Yep. Are you going to vote? Oh, absolutely. I vote every election. All right. Robin. So would you vote for Romney or would you vote for Obama? I will vote for Gary Johnson, the former New Mexico governor <laughs> who's running under the libertarian banner. I knew it. That's who I'm, and I urge, that is not wasting your vote. (laughs) I'll tell you what wasting your vote is. Wasting your vote is voting for a Democrat or Republican because it doesn't matter with them. No matter who wins, you are going to get the same government because they're both been, they've both been bought by the corporations and you're going to get the same thing. But don't you think, like I was saying on the air, Romney uh, is not my candidate. I don't like him because uh, what he but his performance at Bain Capital is all you have to talk about. That's right. If you read up on that. He's Gordon Gecko. Yeah, he's Gordon Gecko <laughs> in spades. Yep. I mean, worse Completely. than Gordon. I mean, I'm not sure he shouldn't uh, be thrown out of the country, let alone l- allowed to be the president. He showed a lack of compassion. He, uh, the, 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 the way they make money with these leverage buyouts is insane. Yep. And I can't feel anything for a guy who's practiced that in the past. I yep. can't. I, yep. You know, so, so I will cast my vote for Obama. Well, the problem with Obama is he's done a lot of things. He's continued with the George Bush policies completely. We're under more surveillance. He's now busting medical marijuana, which he said he wouldn't do. We still have Gitmo. You know, nobody... Here's what I love. Not one person has been brought to trial for 9-11. Right. How do you explain that? You know why? Why? They don't have no evidence. They couldn't get a (laughs) conviction if they tried. And like Sheikh Khalid Mohammed, who they said confessed, they waterboarded him 180 times. Howard, you'd confess. Absolutely. If you got waterboarded 180 times, then we could all say, Howard Stern did 9-11. He confessed to it. (laughs) You know, let me say something. You have, let me tell you this, Howard. I can't tell you everywhere I go how people tell me, when are you going to be on Howard again? Well, people love you on here. Well, they love you too. And here's what I'm going to give you to. Today. Go ahead. You got f- three years now right. to do it. If the, peop- the people of America, for me to run for president, have got to show me something before I put my ass out there. Again. In other words, they have to do some work. It's not going to be that No, they got to show me they, got, they want me. Uh, if, if, if the people of the United States will get me work, grassroots, cost no money, get me ballot access in all 50 states, rise up and guarantee I can be in the debates. And you wouldn't be on any uh, I would run party. individual as Jesse Ventura. If they can accomplish that for me, I will run in 2016 will you help the as people, Jesse Ventura. But will you help the people to organize? They, they, you, they, you need a leader to organize a movement like that. It is not easy to get so on the ballot. So you're acting, the pe- acting as if people no. rise up in general. They I, don't. Don't well, you think most they, people are lazy and aren't yeah. going to do anything anymore? Well, if then fine, then you know I what? won't do it. We saw in the '60s with with the Vietnam War yep. when there was a draft. Yep. People rose up. First time you saw people not being lazy because their lives were on the line. Yep. And now that we don't have a draft, people don't get all that worked up about stuff. Well, their their economy's on the line now. Right. You know, they better look hard at what's going on because who's responsible? The Democrats and Republicans. They so you would have run, run on it. a third party. Now, you, according now, to your... run, I, now I'd support no parties. I, I support abolishing all political parties. And if you read chapter two, you'll see I have three pretty good allies, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. I agree with the premise of your book. By the way, it's called, I can't say it. It's Democrips. And Rebloodlikens. Re- why, why are we getting that echo all of a sudden? You re- hear that? Rebloodlikens. Rebloodlikens. Wait a second. Let me see if I can get Rebloodlikens. Okay. Yeah, no You're gangs right. in government. You make a point 
that the, both these parties are like gangs. You got to sign up, you Completely. pay dues, you do the whole thing. It's like, it's like and, a, and most important, Howard, your first allegiance is to the gang, not the country. And you're right because a lot of people just vote along party lines. They go, "I'm a Republican. I'm only voting for the Republican candidates." They don't really look at the candidate. And there's where we could start. Here's a huge thing we could do, Howard. Why remove the party names from a ballot? That's a great idea. Get them off. Because then you'd be forced to research the candidate. Exactly. You'd have to get to know the man. Exactly. But the the parties could still endorse, just like the teachers union endorses, the firemen endorse. But take the names off the ballot. That way you have to find out what does John Smith stand for. Right now it's so easy, Howard. All you got to do if you're conservative, you look for Republican. You don't have to know their name. No. If you're liberal, you look for Democrat. Is it even constitutional to put a emblem on the ballot? Uh, you, you know, when you when you go in to vote, you see the Democratic symbol, or you see a Republican, or you see you see the name of Call the brand. Call it is a gang symbol. It, well, well, think of it like that. <laughs> they would never allow a gang symbol in there. No. Why do they allow those symbols? Because they run it. That's right. They make all the rules. They make the rules, Howard. It's like play, it's like if you played them in football. And if you're beating them at halftime, and then they're going to tell you, okay, your side can't throw a pass anymore. You can only run. We're right. changing the rules in the middle of the game. Because it is insane. Like, talking about what you're doing, people think you're crazy. Oh, put me on the ballot with no party. Let me just run as a guy. And people think you're nuts. They think you're a, a lunatic, right? A heretic. Because I don't you- know. But then, you know, I can only you, be run me, into, Howard. Right. <laughs> you run into the same problem you had in your state when you were governor. The Republicans and Democrats are still the legislature. That's right. Right. But if the people stand behind you and their jobs are in jeopardy and they know it, trust me, they'll cooperate. You must like Occupy Wall Street because Absolutely. They're, they're really against what happened in terms of uh, there's no fair rules down on Wall Street. People are getting rich with like like Romney and the leverage buyout and Bain and all that kind of stuff. They're saying, wait a second, let's make the playing level. Let's make the playing field level. Uh, right. That's what they're saying. In fact, more than that, Howard, everyone in this country should have supported the Wall Street movement. And I'll tell you why. All all they were doing was exercising their First Amendment rights. Right. Whether you agreed or disagreed with them, you should have supported it because someday you may want to. Right. And now you're going to get run off with pepper spray and dogs. Do you know what for they did? assembling. Yeah. Oh, you can get arrested now for assembling. Right. I mean, the, the, these two parties ignore the Bill of Rights. They ignore the Constitution. I need to tell I don't fly anymore. You know about my court case. Now, your court case was thrown out. Yes. And right. Here's, it, it, I, it was, I sued under the Fourth Amendment, reasonable search and seizure. You went to the airport, they searched you. Well, I have metal in my body. Right. So when I go through the metal detector, I go through naked, it's going off. Right. So then I'm subjected <laughs> to either the x-ray or the, or the sexual assault, right? <laughs> so I sued under my Fourth Amendment. The cowardly judge rules she doesn't have jurisdiction. That's what they do. We found out every court case against Homeland Security and TSA is thrown out. People need to understand when you go to an airport. What do you want them to do, though, at the airport? In other words, what, we do want a level of security, right? We, we, we don't want to get on a plane. The Israelis don't do what we what do. What do they do? And they profile. They, right. they, do, they do it like Are detectives. Are you for that? At an airport, I'd rather have so that. So if an Arab guy comes up to the to the uh, thing, he should be strip pulled into him. a strip search. <laughs> well, him, right? not necessarily strip search, but they should pay attention to the people that look like they would. Or, well, I don't know. The Israelis are very successful. So they must have it. some method, but you're saying. going back to me, Howard, right. how am I a threat? I've been flying for 30 years. <laughs> I've been a governor. I've been a mayor. Uh, but uh, they have to treat everyone the same way. That's the way they well, do it. Well, let me give you a story on that, if I may. Okay. I was actually the governor, and it was right after 9-11, and I had to go to California for business. We didn't know when I would return. They bought me a one-way ticket. (laughs) I got to the Minneapolis airport, and they yanked me. The wow. governor. The governor. Yeah. And so this kid, this kid. You got no respect. Well, this kid, this kid's giving me, and I, you know, searching me, and I, I looked at him and said, you know, when does common sense enter into this? And he goes, what do you mean, sir? I said, well, when's the last time a current governor attempted to hijack a plane? <laughs> and, and he had your answer, Howard. Right. A good answer. He right. said, well, we have to treat everyone equal. Okay. And I said, okay, I'm going to ask you a second time. When does common sense enter? He goes, what do you mean? I said, you see those two guys? 
guys in the suits over there waiting for me? He goes, yes. I said, they're both carrying nine millimeters. They're my bodyguards. They're getting on the plane with me. I'm their boss. All I have to do is order them to give me their gun, and they have to. Right. You're searching me, and I'm getting on a plane with two armed <laughs> bodyguards. It does seem ridiculous. You know, I've... well, then... I got to California. Right. I'm not even governor there. Right. We finished the business. We got the one-way ticket back to Minneapolis. California didn't even make me go through the airport. CHP drove me out on the tarmac, brought me up to the side of the plane, loaded me on before the people even got there. So your point is well taken. They had some common sense in California. They kind of understood that you're the governor, and probably you would not be doing an act of terrorism. And I don't think that most governors are terrorists. Right. Although you might question that would definitely Democrats and Republicans. What do you think <laughs> of this guy, Paul Ryan, who is running for vice president when he says, and, he, and this was, I just saw this over the weekend, he actually said intelligent people will not vote Republican. I think that's Santorum. Was it Santorum who said it? I thought it was Paul Ryan who said it. No, oh, Santorum. it was Santorum? Yeah. Oh, is that what he said? Santorum said that. And his said theory, he said that intelligent people will not vote Republican. It wasn't Paul Ryan. I stand corrected. I thought it was. So Santorum said this because he said, you know, only faith-based people will vote Republican. Good, good, solid America. But really intelligent people, the intelligentsia will not vote Republican. That well, seems like a well, crazy statement. Well, maybe that's because intelligent people aren't faith-based. Maybe that's it. Because well, after all, if you know, like I do... Uh, I put God right with the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, and Santa. Well, you make a good point. If somebody said to you, I pray to the Easter Bunny, you'd say, well, you're a lunatic. You know, you, you have to be locked up. But if they say, I pray to God, or I pray to Jesus, or whoever, yeah. I don't know, whoever it is. By the way, Jesus was against organized religion, too. Yeah, well, so and, and so what he would be appalled if he saw what was happening Oh, right absolutely now. he would be. So when you tell people you're an atheist, it offends them, doesn't it? Right to the core. They don't want to hear it and they don't want you to have that opinion yeah they want to change you yeah it, it drives them crazy yeah. i know a very religious person i recently said you know gee uh, i know this guy's an atheist he makes a very good argument that there's no god and she got so violently upset don't talk to me about that they don't want to hear it because they don't they have the belief howard it's a great crutch of believing that there is something after this life right and they need to cling to that belief I and, I, and I'm fine. I believe there may be something after this life, but you're just not going to convince me that there's a guy in the sky that watches over all of us. And I think and, you're... and we have to pay homage to him. And here's a good one, Howard. If you follow Christianity, now, God created the earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested, right? Right. Now, I'm stealing this, and we'll see if you know from who. Okay. But uh, God created the world in six days, on the seventh day he rested. Why do we choose his day? off to bother him. George Carlin. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Yeah, George, George Carlin, Carlin why, routine. That's and right. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Why do we choose God's day off to bother him? Do it Monday <laughs> through Saturday and let him have a day <laughs> off. And isn't it possible that religion cripples us that like these very religious people don't want to believe in science anymore. They no. want to say we we put our faith in God. Like I, I saw there was one Tea Party kind of guy uh, a guy who was in office saying we have to pray for rain and uh, that's like doing a rain dance like, <laughs> you know, right. like in the old days that's instead right. of saying hey does that it, it somehow prevents us from turning to science doesn't it well i'd put if you want rain i'd put my faith in harp that thing i discovered up in alaska with a right. that can control the weather so <laughs> pray to harp well you would hope that sun, <laughs> like are you going to pray to god for a cure for cancer or are you going to have a bunch of scientists who actually go out and try and find a cure well, for cancer well put it this way if you're going to pray to god to get the cure i don't think the cure is ever coming Right, right. It's that simple. Yeah, I think you you're going to be waiting a long time. You can do all the you want, and you, the cure ain't going to get here. Uh, you know, and if there is a God, I think he's very much like the George Burns character in Oh God, that original <laughs> movie. Yeah. No, where he said, I gave you everything. It's up to you. Right. You know, do it's, it. It's up to you. What you want. And then here's one that gets me. If you're religious and you believe, as they say, that God created everything for us to use. Right. Why is marijuana illegal? Now, aren't you disappointed in the president? Didn't he yes. say that he was going to relax the laws of marijuana? Yeah. And you don't use marijuana, right? I have. Oh, you have. Sure. I, I have in the past, but I don't use it uh, any. You know, I haven't had smoked a joint in years. Uh, but maybe I, you I, should start again. No, Howard. but I'm for the legalization of it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, 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 all me drugs. Too. Yes. Who cares? Howard, Howard, you know what? If I run for president.
president. Now, you're doing this TV show now. Right, America's Got Talent. Yeah, and you're making boatloads of money. <laughs> you don't fool me on <laughs> not that enough. one. I'm not going to even question you on how much you're making. I mean, right. it, but when you're done with that, right. how about if you run with me? You want me to be your veep? Maybe. Let me think about it. All right. Well, I have to consider I it. Howard, I, what do you mean you don't know? Howard doesn't like scrutiny. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's but, right. But veeps don't get scrutinized. All they got to do is go to funerals you and You don't stuff. have to show your uh, tax returns if you're the veep? Uh, no. By the time Howard's ready to do that, he'll have so much money he won't give a damn about his tax returns. Why do you think Mitt Romney won't show his tax returns? Because he's made so much money and he's so wealthy, and how did he make it? Right. And, and we it's know probably how. all hidden overseas, too, in a lot of overseas accounts and all that stuff. That's why he don't want to. The leverage buyout business is such a bad business. Oh. It doesn't create a product. You know, even the old... It, the, the, I was talking about this uh, Matt Taibbi article in Rolling Stone. Sure. He was talking about how, you know, even the old guys, who like the Henry Fords and stuff, a, as much as they might have made money, they created jobs in America. They You built these cars or yep. you made a product. These leverage buyout guys go in and they tank the company and they pull out a lot of cash for themselves. And put people on the unemployment line. They do. It's so how can simple. we... How can a guy like that be a president? I don't know. Here's one good one I've noticed, Howard. Yeah. Okay. First of all, they knew four years ago we were going to get Romney. You know how I know that? How do you know that? Do you remember right after the Obama uh, 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 McCain election, right. all of a sudden we're getting Mormon ads on TV? Remember these regular people, and then they turn to the camera and say, and I'm a Mormon. Right. They were preparing, that was preparing us. us? Absolutely uh, it was I, preparing us because, you know, Mormonism is kind of a strange People call it a cult religion. It's yeah, why not is really it strange? Christian. Well, you could have multiple wives, and they believe, like Bill Maher said, that God comes from this planet <laughs> or whatever. I was watching Bill Maher a couple weeks that, ago. But is that any more ridiculous than any other religion? No, but it's not mainstream. It's right. not the mainstream. It's not religion, the mainstream yeah. of religion. So they had to prepare. It's just like when I was a kid. There's magic and, underwear? Yeah, yeah. Just like when I was a kid, when Jack Kennedy was going to run, we had never had a Roman Catholic president. I remember as a kid, people saying, boy, if we elect Kennedy, the Pope's going to run the country. Right. There was a fear of that, right. that the Pope would run the country, while as we saw, Kennedy didn't, he knew the separation of church and state. I don't believe we really have separation of church and state anymore. People seem to no. want to give that up. Oh, they, want, yeah. they want to have a, like like almost like what we see in these foreign countries. They want countries. a Christian country? They want yeah. a religious country, right? Yeah. And doesn't that bother and, you? Yeah, because what are they going to do with me, the non-believer? Put me in one of their internment camps then? I, I believe so, yeah. 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 Or, or and, and beat me down till I say that I believe? And the beauty of this country is that you can have you any can belief have you any want. You can have any belief you want, but just don't impose it on anyone else. Yeah. Have your beliefs and don't impose them. By the way, how Can you believe we're still arguing over abortion in uh, all this day and age? It's absurd. Well, how about gay marriage? Ridiculous. Well, I mean, how if you vote to ban gay marriage, you are voting for the basic law of discrimination. Right. You're taking one group of people and you are not giving them the same benefits of another group because of their association in that group. That is discrimination nation, plain and simple. I think that's why the Republicans will lose the election, because it, it's a scary property. They're, they're taking people and excluding them more than including them. Yep. And you've got to bring more people. You know, you've got to bring a lot of people to the uh, table yep. Yep. to get elected. Yep. I mean, but you're a guy who got so elected. Now, Howard, I want to, when are you going to visit me in Mexico this winter? Never. Oh, that's never Come happened. on, Howard. My wife wants to go to Mexico this winter, and I said, absolutely not. I will be gang raped. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> Look, who's going to protect the, me? Me. The you. Navy SEAL. <laughs> you, I, I will be still have your to skills? Protect. Yes, you do. Are and there gang rapists roaming around your house? Are of course. you kidding me? Well, you know where he lives? He lives like in a tenement somewhere. No, I do not. Do I you have a nice place? I have 4,500 square feet right on the beach. And what are we going to do if the gangs come and attack There's us? There's no gangs down there. <laughs> what are I'm in the Baja. Well, what happens in the Baja if the gangs come to your place they and don't. I'm there? They're not there. How are you going to protect me? I have a level three protection dog. Nobody can get past him. What kind of dog? A German Shepherd? Belgian Malinois. Ah. Oh, yeah? Is it an attack dog? He's not an attack dog. He is a level three protection dog. I bet you he'll see me and attack I, me. Not <laughs> only if I tell him. No, yeah, you're afraid no. of the dog. Those kind of dogs are not vicious. They're like soldiers. They only attack if they're ordered to by me. Give me the game plan. If somebody comes to your home, yep. and let's say somebody wants to get some nut, all right? 
Yep. How do you prepare yourself? What do you have? Do you have fatigues that you immediately change into? Do you have a costume of some sort? Like or do you, to get into how, a yeah, right, right. how is that going to protect Well, because me? you might have like a, 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 a Kevlar uh, a thing. I don't know. Wait, like wait, a Batman. Which, which home are we talking about? I'm talking about Mexico Baja, home Mexico. Or Mexico. Baja home. I have my dog. because gu- Well, here's a good one. Everybody in this country now, you got this movement to take away our guns, right? Yes, right. Well, Mexico, you're not allowed to have a gun. Right. And 20,000 people were killed last year in the war on drugs down there. So for those people that want to see a country that doesn't allow guns doesn't and work. what it's like, right. look at what ha- is happening in Mexico. What guns do well, you own? Well, that's not a good example. Howard, <laughs> I don't own a gun. <laughs> no, what do you have? Come I on. don't own a gun. Why are you saying that? Why, because well, I don't want them to and come and get it. Tick? I gave all my guns you have a away. Tick. <laughs> do you I know gave, that? I gave all my guns away. No, I. Uh, in this country, you keep a gun. No, I gave them all away. <laughs> <laughs> all right, do you still I, go into Target I'll process? tell you what I used to own. What did you used to own? And you be okay, the judge. Go ahead. I own four assault weapons and probably a couple of shotguns and uh, multi-handguns. Is that because you believe that we need a militia? In case the government becomes too strong? Yes. You, is that why you want assault weapons? No, I want assault weapons because those are the guns I was trained on and the ones I know. Why would I buy a weapon I don't know? My, how, my assault weapon, I can take it apart. I know how to clean it. Can you take it apart and clean it. it blindfolded? Not anymore today. But there was a time you could. Probably. You had to be able to do that in the dark in the military. Well, it, it, not only that, but I'll tell you what would happen. You know, how I, I, you know the thing you put in with the bullets? What's it called? The With magazine. It, very good. See, there you got she a military. Me to it. I knew that. <laughs> well, she was Robin's military. military. Yes. She know that. Everyone calls it a clip. Right. Well, if you're going through Bud's basic underwater demolition seal training and you call that a clip, right. you will be duck walking around the compound carrying it. Is that true? Absolutely. Well, why, why is that? Because you because don't know you the name? Because you called it the wrong name. Really? Yes. Oh, it fake. is called a magazine, not, not a clip. I'm not joining the military. That's it. I'm out. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to be in. Howard, you couldn't join the military because they'd shave your head. How long has <laughs> it been, how long's it been oh. since you've had a shaved head? Since I'm about five. My okay. mom used to shave my head with butcher's wax and do that whole thing. It's too much. I mean, it's crazy. Come on, Howard. I'm pleading with you. Come visit me in Mexico. What are we going to do there? I mean, honestly, we can paddle surf. We can ride <laughs> ATVs. I'm already out. We can do. We can. We can take my rubber raft and drive around. It we sounds can, exhausting. Yeah, you don't know me. I, I, I fall apart. Then you can come there and sleep. Really? Well, it's true. We have a lot to discuss. If I'm going to be your vice president, yes. And I don't have to do anything as vice president. You'll run everything. And I'll I just, take care of it all. I'll Howard, just go out and have the fun stuff. I and I just need you on the air till they force you off. Let's say we, we could campaign on here. When I won governor of Minnesota, right? One of the reasons I didn't have to spend no money. I had a statewide radio show, which they allowed me till I filed, and then, of course, I had to go off the air. Right. So if I become your veep, don't I? Although these aren't oh, public airwaves. That's, that's right. right. Oh, that's right. We've got a platform, We've my friend. We've got a platform. We're going to fucking win. You're god dang right we could. You and I could do it without a party. Oh, my God. Where without am I going to live? a freaking party. Oh, well, my God. Well, they have a house for you. The they do a vice president? Yes, house? it's right by, and you're safe. It's in the Naval Observatory, and you know what you get to use? That big telescope. Oh. Because I visited Al Gore there, and you can go out and you can look at that telescope, and you can see all sorts of shit in the I space. I would love it. I would love and it. What yours. are we going to do? So, what are you going to? Let's say we do this, okay? Let, all I'm, right. I'm thinking about it, and you're convincing me. All right. Let's say we go for it. All right. I'm serious. Okay. All right. I'm thinking about all it. All right. I know you're serious because you've actually pulled this off before. That's right. What if we win? What are we going to do our first hundred days in office? What are we really going to do? Well, the first thing we'll do, we're going to get rid of the Patriot Act. Go ahead. That okay, would be I'm thinking good. For that. Go ahead. Second of all, I think I, I would absolutely cut defense spending to help balance the budget. I'm for that. Uh, I would also close all these massive bases throughout the world that we don't need. Okay, I'll go for that. You know, and right. uh, 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 this is going to be major. And I would uh, a revolution. And and I would <laughs> and I would work diligently to get a constitutional amendment, because it's the only way you can do it, right. to overthrow that Supreme Court thing that said corporations have the say, are the same, same as right. individuals as and that individual. money is free speech. That's the o- for. The only way you can stop that is to amend the Constitution now, because then it overrides the Supreme Court. By the way, you know what I'm waiting for? I'm afraid you'll get hurt in office and I'll I, have to take over. I'm, w- <laughs> I'm, waiting, 
waiting for the first bank robber to rob the bank and use that as his defense. I was only exercising my free speech. I was going in the bank to get some free speech. Yeah. You know? So so this is something, this is your new passion. In other words, you really, because you've said, I'm out of politics. I don't want, Uh, now you want to be president under certain circumstances. Under certain circumstances, I'll, yeah, if the people do it and get behind me without a party, because I also want to destroy these parties and turn them into nothing more than what they are, political action committees or nothing more than the teachers union. What are you doing all day? Are you like, I, I mean, I know you got this new book out. Let me, let me give it a plug, by the sure. way. I should uh, really mention Jesse Ventura's book, Democrips and Re- Bloodlikens, Re- Bloodlikens, is in store now. And no, you got to read the bottom, No More Gangs in Government, the no subtitle. More, no, I don't have that here. Oh, no more, yeah, the subtitle is No More Gangs in Government. So aside from writing books, what are you doing? You just hanging? Are you just Playing a lot of golf. And paddle surf and so, And when yeah. are you getting all this information? Are you reading a couple of newspapers a I, day? No, Where are you getting your information? Today? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, when I write books, I write them in Mexico. Because that's where I can get, and Dick Russell, my co-writer, he owns a, he lives in a place a little ways from me, and we get together down there. And that's where we churn out the books in the winter in Mexico. How many books now have you written? Uh, I think this is my sixth New York Times bestseller, I is think. Is that right? This I'm is kind the of sixth losing book. track. This is your thing now. You're an author. <laughs> yes, but this will be the last one. Why? Why is that? No, right won't. now I got. I'm not motivated. There's nothing more I can say, Howard, and I don't want to repeat myself. But how do you myself. know it's your last one? You don't know it. Well, yeah, of course I don't. But right, right now I have no more intention to. This is it. Yeah, I, my intention now is to work as diligently as I can to get Howard Stern to come to Mexico so we can run and take our country back. When you How's write that? a new book, one of the places that you would normally go, Fox News or MSNBC, they those, won't have me. What is going... When did they stop having you? Uh, About two or three years ago. What is your theory on that? You're an excellent guest. You're an interesting guy. Um, I think one of the major reasons is because they can't intimidate me. But what do you mean? Well, they they live off intimidation, Hannity and and, and, uh, the other guy, O'Reilly and all them. So when you go on there, you stand up to them. It doesn't fit into the game plan. Yeah. And and the other thing is, I don't think they want to give me any type of agenda because... It's it's opposed to what they do. Yeah. And well, and they don't want to let me be out there and get my word out because... Do you ever say to them, your shills, your lackeys for the Republican Party? I never see them. Right. I'd love to. I'd it, love to say that to them, but they, you know, that it is weird they that won't that, let me on. Uh, politics has become sport, hasn't it? it? Really, when you think about it, like like, like you say, it, it, so the Fox guys are more Republican, the MSNBC guys are more Democrat, and they're they're cheerleading their team. On. And plus, I'm the independent. And remember, I'm going after the corporations. Who do you think runs them? Corporations. Yep. One of the one of the interesting things I heard Dan Rather. And Dan Rather, you know, his report on George Bush's uh, military record was completely honest and true. He got fired for it. That's right. But even more importantly, Rather said 20 years ago, we had 40 independent outlets that you could get news and information from. Now, through corporate takeovers, we're down to four. What about the Internet, though? Doesn't that sort of fill out the the, the The Internet can, yes, it can. Uh, What's interesting is this. In the private sector, don't they tell you competition's good? Yeah. Then why not for president? Why isn't competition good there? Like, why not have six candidates? Well, at least another voice in a debate. We haven't heard a third voice now for 20 years in a presidential debate. Didn't you think, what's his name, uh, the guy you like? Um, Gary uh, Johnson? No, no. Uh, oh, uh, The guy uh, ran for president. I can't think of his Ron name. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. D- didn't you think that somehow he would run on a third party? And I hoped he would, but he didn't. Are you in touch with him? No. You don't know the man. Oh yes, I know him. Yeah, you, you absolutely. Like him. Oh, very much. In fact, when they had the Republican convention in St. Paul a couple years ago, mm-hmm. uh, Ron Paul held a counter convention <clears throat> at the Target Center in Minneapolis and invited me to speak. And we were there in front of sixteen thousand with no additional security, just rent a cops. But they paint him to be like a lunatic, right? Yep. Right. Yep. They're, they're pretty thorough. In that's there. what the media does. Anybody that's not part of the two gangs or in lockstep, then you're a wing nut. Then you're this. Huh. Then you're that. Oh, I yeah. like your idea with well, the gang fact, thing. In fact, when I ran, when I ran for governor of Minnesota, yeah. I, I had been a mayor. But yet I was the only candidate that had his private sector business always put in front of his name. Former pro wrestler. 
where right. the others got right, the political. Right, right. And I was a former mayor. Why not former mayor? This is politics. Right. But it was always former pro wrestler. Yeah, you didn't see Ronald Reagan going former actor. They did, they just introduced him as uh, the governor, and then he was the president. Exactly. Yeah, so did you, you always see the those pro wrestler. Subtle, see those subtle little things the media does? Makes you a lunatic. Yep. Yep. I heard his story, switching businesses right. for a second, show business. When you were working with Arnold Schwarzenegger, he wanted to compare his biceps with yours. He was very intent on proving that his biceps were bigger than yours. And you, in your day, you were very big biceps. Sure. And then there was some measurement taken. Completely untrue. Untrue? Totally. Was there None not a measurement happened? and that your Never. biceps were a full inch bigger than Arnold's? Never. And he got angry with you? Never. It never happened? Never happened. Because that would have been awfully strange. Never happened. Arnold is not that insecure. He's the, he's, he was the best built man in the world for six consecutive years in a row. Ar- Ar- one thing Arnold doesn't lack is self-esteem. What about you two had a penis <laughs> contest and you were two inches longer than him? I heard that as well. Well, the important thing was I was two inches thicker. Ask women. Is that true? Women don't care about length. They care about girth. They do, and I don't have either one. Yeah, but you got money, Howard. That could make up for anything. I roll dollar bills around my cock when there I have sex. Go. There you go. You don't curse, do you? Sure. I don't. I don't ever hear you curse. Oh, you should hear it when I golf. Have you ever said the c word for a woman's, uh, you know, vagina? Not often, but I have. Have you ever called a woman the c word? Never. 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 Too much respect. You still getting laid? Absolutely. Huh? You and your wife still doing it? Absolutely. At least, yeah. at least two to three times a week. Is that right? Yeah. Good for you. Oh, without a doubt. I think it's our sexuality. I've been married 37 years now, and and uh, when you got something good, when you uh, the old cliche, why why have hamburger on the road when you got steak at home? It's nice to be in a good relationship, isn't it? Oh, I love it. It's I great. love it because I I know there's a trust. There's a I know she's always there for me, and uh, I can't tell you that. Uh, uh, Does she, she disagree with you politically? No, but she doesn't like me to do it. That's my biggest obstacle. My, really? In fact, that was the reason I didn't seek. I never went public with this because I felt the public didn't need to know. But now I'll talk about it. The biggest reason I did not run for re-election for a second term as governor, my wife had some health issues, and it dealt with that when the media attacked our children. It did, really so stressed she, so, her out. So she got stressed out, and she did she have a breakdown? Well, not really a breakdown, but she she had a lot. She 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 also got Epstein Bar mono that ev- evolved into this chronic fatigue shit. Yeah, and I think you got to deal with that your whole life. Was it very difficult for you not to come out with that story? In other words, because when people start no. going, "Oh, he didn't run because he can't win," and no. he didn't run. Oh, I could have won. Hell, right. I had I had approval ratings of seventy three. So didn't you want to say to the public, "Gee, the reason I'm really not." No. No, running is because there. that's my, our private business. No, no, no. That's very noble of you. No, no, no. And I, I, I finally wrote about it in my book, Don't Start the Revolution Without Me. And that was, what, three or four years after I got out of office. Wow. Well, and, that's uh, very noble of you, actually. I don't know if it's noble, sure but it's it nobody's damn business. Howard, I'll give you You put this. your wife in front of your, oh, your uh, political ambition. My wife, I will, I will put my wife in front of holding any elected office. When you see a guy, so if she objects to you being president, this whole thing with Howard is off. Yeah, we can't. We got to sit down with her. Well, that's why running. I need Howard to come to Mexico. <laughs> Maybe I have to come. Now, if we're talking, we're going to be working together, and it kind of works into my plan. Three years from now, you know, I need a job that really I basically can't don't have to do anything. <laughs> you know, and I get a decent paycheck. I'll, I'll, you you don't need the paycheck. No, Howard. I always <laughs> like a paycheck. I'm a working man. Well, your VP gets paid. Yeah, that's right. And fine. you get a free house. And plus, like, I'll do all the fun and stuff then you that you can, don't like. And all then the you, bullshit nonsense. Yeah, I'll and then take you can keep your house on the Hamptons yeah, and right. go there on vacation. I don't care. It kind of fits into my plan. Let me get back to you on that. All right. All right. Uh, hey, hey, Howard. Mr. And like President. Said, and like I said, you don't have to go off the air. Robin could be Secretary of State. Uh, yeah, why not? I, Robin's military. I might make her Secretary of Defense. Oh, I love there that. There you go. Because you know, she, the yeah. first woman, Secretary of Defense. And she's fabulous with people. You there see you her. go. Yeah, they love there it. you the go. People love hey, her. I'm, not, I'm not adverse to that. Oh, no I problem love this there. Whole, I love this whole ticket. <laughs> Howard, I'm serious. Man, imagine and not, we win. And, and think, even if we failed, which I don't believe because I don't do it to no, lose. No, we're going to win. But I'm a winner. What a... What a what, what a, a one-two punch. We, we would go, Howard, let me give and it to now, you this way. Go ahead. We w- you would be down in history forever. 
and I got the hair of George Washington. Look at me. Yeah, it's and, retro. And it's retro. It's very retro. People <laughs> We're love going it. Going all the way back to the first. So president. people here, I'm a judge. I think I'm on the Supreme Court with this hair. There, <laughs> there you go. There and you know, go. with my new gig on America's Got Talent, I'm more mass appeal now. The people will vote for That's me. Right. That's right. That's right. 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 And you got the show, man. It won't cost us no money. Yeah, See, it, that's the thing I like is that <laughs> when I ran for governor, I only raised $300,000. Howard, name me any other elected official who actually made more money doing the job than they spent to get it. Uh, I, I did. I think you're the only one in history. Yeah, I did. Wow. And you know why I did that? My dad. When I was when I was about 16, I came home from school. My dad was a WW2 vet. And I came home from school one day, and my dad said, you know, all politicians are crooks. And I said, come on, Dad, you can't make a blank statement like that. They can't all be crooks. He said, yes, they are. You only went to eighth grade. Right. And I said, uh, how can you say that? He says, easy. He said, because they spend a million dollars for a job only pays a hundred grand. Right. And in that something basic be, uh, eighth yeah. grade... There's something wrong with that. That's right. Nobody would do that. Nobody would spend more money than what you're going to make on a job except the politicians. Here's one for you, Howard. It's in my book. Did you know these big multi-corporations spend more money on lobbying than they pay in taxes? Right. Oh, yeah. What oh, does yeah, that tell you? Well, yeah. What does that tell you? You know, I was just thinking about you. Like when you were in the military, and I know you can't talk about this, but I, I, I assume, can, but no, I don't. No, no. But I assume you've <laughs> killed. I've, I assume you've killed people. No, I have not. Really? No, no. <laughs> so you're winking again. <laughs> <laughs> but let, 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 let me go on with my question. Okay. I assume when you were in, in Vietnam, you had to kill some people, and now it probably keeps you up at night because at the time you thought you were doing the right thing, but now when you think back, and I bet you in your mind you can visualize actually killing somebody. I bet you now it haunts you because you don't believe in the cause anymore. It, it, that's the thing that fucks a soldier's head up. Maybe, but it, do, it, it, it doesn't screw with me because people often ask me what my favorite career was because I've had so many. Right. And I always tell them each and every one of them was at that time of my life. But it doesn't haunt you when you see the guy. I was doing my we, job. You, I know. but I was he, doing my job. I know, but it's That's hard to live with, right? That's the job that I had to do. That's a job that I volunteered for. The Navy does not draft. The SEALs, you have to volunteer for it. you got to want it to get through training. And therefore, it just ends right there. All right. It ends right Fair there. Fair enough. All right, listen, the new, the new book. Yep. And I'm really toying with this vice presidency. Good. Vice I'm president dead serious. Well, well, so am I now. I'm First, dead serious. First, I thought serious. you were kidding. I am not. We got three years. Vice President <laughs> Stern. Oh, think of the and outfit. Then, and then think I, of the outfits hey, my wife can wear hey, at the inauguration. And look, and look at it this <laughs> oh, yeah. way. Look That's at right. it this way, Howard. Oh, I can, get, wait, I can get John Varvatos to dress us for the inauguration. Very good, but look at it this way, yeah. too. Look at my political history, too. Vice President Stern, I only do one term. I did one term as mayor, one right. term as governor. Then I'll take you over. You could then be President Stern. I don't Stern. want to be president. Yeah, you oh, you that, don't? No, you can be the rock star. I'm just going <laughs> to... You might like it when she gets You might like it. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I don't. I don't need the aggravation. All right, look. There's a lot on the table, a lot to think about now yeah. that you've offered me the vice president. Well, I think it's good. I'll keep talking to him about it. I'll talk him in. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> That's right. Stay on him. Uh, Jesse Because Ventura's I didn't realize till we got here that you wouldn't have to go off the air. That's right. I didn't realize I was, that. I've been trying to tell you that. You're so busy yapping, you don't listen to me. <laughs> no, it's there now. Uh, that's right. Was it wrong that Obama had to essentially apologize for that film? You know, you know what I'm talking that's about. That's stupid. Yeah. Um that dumb film. Uh, I know. don't think he should have apologized for it, but I don't think he really did. I think that he just made it clear this was a film that was not supported by our government and that we live in a free country and that shit like this is going to happen and he can't yeah, be like responsible. Yeah, like they're listening to him out right. there in the street. And the, but, the pe- but the, the people over there have never lived in a democracy. They don't. They think that that the government yeah. sponsors yeah. all of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. They it, don't get... I mean, what are we going to do with it over get there? Get out of there. What the yeah, fuck so are we going to do? Look at it this way. Do you remember when the, the Marine Barrett was attacked in Lebanon in yes. the 80s. They killed 200 Marines. Well, the pinnacle of Republicanism, Ronald Reagan, the god of modern Republican, what did he do? He got out of there. Out of, right. Yeah. Ronald Reagan didn't stay and fight. He got, if they don't want us, let's get the hell out of there. That's what about simple. the argument that a lot of the people do want us there, but the, these rowdy couple of people don't? That's you their don't business. The, that's their business. Let that, them let solve them that. Let them solve it. it. And then come to us and say, we need your help. That's their country. Let them solve it. Oh, well, we gotta, way, are we going to fucking thing, fuck things up in Washington? Oh, yes. you bet, man. And that's well, why, why we got to do it, to fuck things up. Why did they wow. question the guy who made the movie? 
Yeah, why are they questioning that guy? The guy who made the movie. Because they're now going to hang him out to dry as the villain. They right. better, what's they gotta, his crime? They gotta, there isn't Robin, but they got to have a villain. Well, look at poor Bradley Manning, the guy from WikiLeaks. Right. Yeah. They're, they're like holding him, right? him that, well, the first thing he released w- to the public was that helicopter gunship massacring those innocent civilians down on the street. Those guys are walking free and Manning's in prison? It's crazy. White House, the White House has asked Google to remove the film. They shouldn't do that, no. right? No. No, this we're is not what doing we're that. About. Nope. Now we're China all of a nope. sudden. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, let's remember, Robin, we ain't the country we used to be. It's ridiculous. But wait till we're in office. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be, we, we will be better than the country we used to be. <laughs> free weed to all the people. Free weed to all the... Well, I don't Come know about free Free at last. No, no, no. Free. I, I free s- weed at last. <laughs> not free. We need the taxes. How about... Right. So oh. not free, but Legal. we'll make it the same as liquor. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Same as liquor. Oh, I'm going to be so good at the debate. You know, <laughs> same right. as liquor. We'll make it the same as liquor. You know why I'm so passionate, too, about the marijuana issue? Go ahead. Ah. My wife and I, in fact, it's my wife's best friend, is now got terminal cancer. Oh. Right. And she, in Minnesota, you can't get it. And so she's buying it illegally, and it helps. She can take the chemo pills without throwing them up. She can eat. Because of pot. Because of pot. Wow. And now and how, why would people hold that back? Exactly. I mean, if you've got cancer, she has to buy it illegally. Damn, yes. She has to buy the pot illegally. Yes. And what goddamn right does the government have to tell you what you can take if you have terminal cancer? Oh, you're oh, you're going to be it's great horrid. in the debates. It's uh, horrid. Well, I Howard, I've always said if I can debate him, I can beat him. It's that simple. With me on your team, it might just put you over the top. <laughs> hmm. All right, just calm down. Look at I'm starting yeah, to rock. Yeah, you're rock. Look at We're him. already you're going nuts. taking I'm offices. Just calm down. I'm starting here. to rock here. <laughs> and, and you you're know starting who, to feel like know, it's Minnesota all over again. Do you know who else again. we can get? We who? can get Tom Morello with us from Rage Against the Machine. He loves us. We can get all the rock and roll. Richie Sambora, who was oh, just easily. here. Oh, easily. I we can get him enlist, at a fundraiser. We can enlist all these rock and roll people to be with us. Get hold of Keith Richards and the Stones. Will you know? Can we blow up our end? And in fact. When uh, uh, the Eagles, Glenn Fry of the Eagles told me when I, they came right when I was getting out of office and he told me, he said, I know you're leaving office, but had you run again, we would have come here and did a fundraiser for you. Well, we get these to do the, the Eagles. I know Joe Walsh. There Personally. you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. I got the whole thing worked out. Uh-huh. Fundraisers, let me handle that. I'll, okay. <laughs> all right. That will be That'll your be job, my thing. Howard. You, you can, just handle all the I'll handle all, all the other, other, other stuff. You take care of the fundraisers. Right. Can you imagine? Ven- oh. I can see it now. Ventura Stern. Oh, I usually don't play second fiddle, but in this case, I might. <laughs> you know, and, mm. and, and, and they can't argue because I've been in the military. That's right. So they can't come at us saying, oh, no military, you know, da, 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 da. I've been there. And on weekends, I'll walk around with that nuke button. Because you could take some time off, and I'll carry I'll go it around. To the Baja. Yeah, you go to the Baja. I'll go to the just... Baja. I'll leave the nuke button with oh, you. Oh my God! I'll press it. I'm gonna fucking press it. I'll solve oh everything. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Well, listen. So what we gotta do? We right now. I'll say that all you Howard Stern people out go ahead. there, get going now. We've got. What do we to have get, to do? Give us. Got, a, what do we have we to do? We have to get ballot access in all That's 50 how do I states. Get I mean, the ballot. people can do it. It's different in every state. Okay. So we need people to organize starting now. You hear that, Marianne from Brooklyn? Ballot Eric, access. the actor? Ballot access in all hold states. It. Let and, me rile the people. Then, up. Okay. Let, hold on. Eric, do you hear me? Eric. Yeah. Do you know what you have to do? No. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to do? Get ballot access for you and Jesse Ventura. Now get to work. Are you really going to work I, at that, I, Eric? I, I hung up on him. Good. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's not going to do a thing. <laughs> All right, look. By, by uh, the way, yeah. Howard, just for me, <laughs> just for me again, I got trapped. It was late night about a month ago. Go ahead. And private parts came on, and you kept me up till 2 in the morning. Give some me, acting. No, give it to me once. What? Oh, WNBC. There How is that? You love that. There it is. Oh, God. WNBC. WNBC. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a nightmare. You know, you have your nightmare from Vietnam. I got my nightmare from WNBC. I think yours is worse. Oh, wait, absolutely. Pig virus. The worst. All right, look. Let's calm down. Actually, Howard, I'm going to get, tell you today. I got in on the tail end of the war, and I spent a great deal of my time, and I'll tell you this. 
I spent a great deal of my time off the coast of Hanoi right. because at that time they were threatening a Hanoi like Normandy invasion of Hanoi because the Vietnamese weren't at the peace table. Right. So we were out there with the 3rd Marine Division waiting. So you said there wasn't a lot of action. It, it, yeah. We, right. we were already getting, as Nixon called it, peace with honor. Yeah. Remember that bullshit? Yeah. Well, we're not doing any of that in our administration. <laughs> you know, so no I just wanted to tell you, I spent the majority of my time off the coast of Hanoi circling around waiting for it. And I say today, thank you. I'm not religious, but thank you, God. I didn't have to go in. Hey, did you... Um, because I may not be sitting here with you. Did, talk to me. Did you sue some dude because he, he wrote in a book yep. that he beat you up in a bar fight? Yep. And that fucking ticked you off. No, it ticked me off because he said, I wish death upon the seals. Oh. My own unit. He's one. He's a SEAL. Yes. And he threw me under the bus. Well, explain what happened well, briefly. I don't know. I, he wrote I, a book. That he said, wrote a book about being the most prolific sniper in U.S. history. I had just crossed to Mexico last January, so I have no way. I, I have no phone. I have no way to defend myself. And he said that I was out there, which I was out there for the graduation of class 258. But he said we were in McPee's bar and that I was saying the SEALs deserve to die. We're baby killers. That we're you da, da, said da. that? Yes. Oh. Which is absurd. And then he said he was forced to hit me, that he punched me, knocked me down, and then he ran. Totally <laughs> made up. Completely. Never happened. Never no fight. happened. You never, never said any I, of these things. I saw this Did you guy. win the case? No, we're still in court. Oh. I saw this guy for the first time in my recollection, June 4th of this year, at the first preliminary hearing in federal court to, to you, try to you settle. You didn't even know him from the SEALs? I didn't know. I don't even know him. I've never, to my knowledge, I've Why never seen... Why would someone do that to you? Did he think maybe you would just let it slide? I don't know. Well, now he's uh, he's on that new TV show where they're making Hollywood actors into special warfare guys. Huh. Apparently, his when he said this, his website took a million more hits. It's called uh. Throwing Me Under the Bus to Make Money and Who Become Famous. Guy? Maybe he thinks this happened. I don't know. They were. Uh, uh, Does he have proof of any kind? Not that I know of. We're, no I've, witness, nothing. He has witnesses, but not one of his witnesses yet have said they've seen the punch. All right. Not one of them. And I, and when I have that witnesses. Case? When we, when, when is, Probably we, next spring we'll get to court. Well, unless I'd like you to win that because if I we run for it. office. I'll uh, win it because, you know. Howard, if I can't win it, it never happened. Right. So how do you lose if it didn't happen? Are you suing him for money? I'm, su I, I'm suing him for court costs and my lawyer fees, and I'm suing him because I want a jury to say this never happened. Because Are witnesses saying you were there at this bar? I have witnesses that I was there. Oh. But it never happened. Wow. And I was sitting with my friends because I was there for the graduation of class 258. I'm class 58. Okay. And, and that's tradition. And so I have witnesses that sat with me all night long who I'm bringing into court to say this never happened. There's no police report, Howard. Hmm. You think right, if a right, former right. governor... And here's the other thing. That's true. Why wouldn't there be a police he report? And why would you Wait. be there for the graduation if that's what you felt? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, and he alleges this happened in 2006, and nobody heard of it until 2011, Make five years later. No scuffle, nothing. Not, are you kidding? I, I've been treated with respect out there. I've never even had an argument with people Because I don't there. want any of this coming up when we run for president uh, and right, vice that president. That's why I get right. it out in the open. That's right. why you and I got to admit, sure, we've smoked pot. Sure, we've done this. And you're not going to screw me. Once I get you on the ballot, you're sure you're going to select me as vice president? Because, you know, you could switch it up uh, <laughs> on me. I'm not the Howard, guy. Howard, I'm looking you right in the eye. Do I, do I look like a guy that is not a man of his word? You look like a man of his word. If I've ever seen anyone who looks like a man of his word, it's you. <laughs> Take it to the bank. All right, thank you. Take it to the all right, bank. All right, all right. enough said. Let me let me mull this all over. All right. so it's, 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 I've never been asked to be vice president before. <laughs> Robin, I, I think I'm going into politics. Oh, I love it. <laughs> You're going back. I You're could, going I, back in. I'm going back in. I got out, now I'm getting back in. <laughs> Jesse Ventura's book, Demo Crips and Rebloodlickens. It's in stores now. No more gangs in government. No more gangs in government. You're making some very good points And, today. Howard, we will run with no political party. I, I, I refuse to run with a party. Exactly. Me, too. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. So We're what history that will be. Oh. We will be. You know who the only other person that did it? George Washington. So we, you and I will be up with the father of our country as the only presidents and vice president who didn't run on a political party. Ugh.
My heart is beating. <laughs> Robin, I haven't felt this alive in a long time. That's wonderful. All right, look. Howard hasn't felt this good, Robin, since he had that girl in the film giving him the massage on the floor. <laughs> or whatever the hell good. it was. Those were the days. Now, that was a movie. <laughs> what a set. Oh, my God. The food. The, they gave me an apartment. It was fantastic. Oh, yeah. All right, listen. We'll talk some more some other time. But all right, Howard. Right. I appreciate it. The great it. Governor Jesse Ventura. He's been here. He's made his statement. You heard it here. All I've right. Been, this, I've been tapped for being a political campaign. Very exciting morning, and we'll be back right after. Thank you, Governor. Thank we'll you, We'll be back Howard. right after these words. It's Thanks, right. Howard. All right, thank All right have a good one. Jesse. Yeah. Ventura Stern in 2016. That's uh, I'll tell you, you know, people probably think we're joking, but... Uh, I don't want to run with the party, and I hate fundraising because all it is is panhandling and political bribery. And with Howard Stern, I would not have to do that. True. And so, therefore, you guys, the, 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 the world is going to laugh, but I'm dead serious on this. If he'd consider it, I'd love it. Because what the hell, Howard's a good American citizen, and there's, there's no prerequisite to be a lawyer. There's no prerequisite you have to be anything. When our forefathers created this country, they wanted regular people to serve as the leaders of this country. Now, Howard and I aren't exactly regular in that sense, well, who's but we're to say still what's regular. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Governor, so, I was going to ask you, um, yeah. because Howard's been so widely criticized over the years by you know, people that don't like his show, why do you think he would be good for America? Because Howard epitomizes free speech. That's why. And we need to get back to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Why do you think, okay, who else gets criticized? Larry Flint of Hustler. Mm -hmm. And yet Larry deserves a pat on the back for standing up and going to court for our First Amendment rights. You may not like him, but that's not the point. The point is it's still free speech. Right. You all turn him off. Yeah. It's that simple. It's called personal responsibility. Somebody don't want to hear Howard? Change the dial. Someone don't want to hear Larry Flint? Don't buy Hustler magazine. It's that simple.